Hi, this is part of a series of videos in which I want to explain how to set up software called Asterix PBX to create a playful telephony system running on a Raspberry Pi like this. Uh, now in this video, what I want to do is explain how to set up and install the software. So how to download Asterix, unpack it, install it on the Raspberry Pi, and then to make the uh, initial setup and configuration to be able to make uh, calls between the telephone handsets on the network. Now I'm using, uh, this is a Raspberry Pi Model B version 2, which is about uh, four or five years old maybe. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM. If you have a Raspberry Pi that's sort of been bought in the last few years, it should work absolutely fine with that. Um, I'm using a Windows PC to do the actual setup uh, and I'm going to be logging in remotely into the Raspberry Pi from my PC. But if you're using a Mac or if you're using a Linux machine or something else, um, there'll be equivalent software you can use uh, for those steps. Uh, so let's get started. Now, because this is the first uh, tutorial I've done using a Raspberry Pi rather than an Arduino, um, I just wanted to take a brief moment out to mention two software programs I use um, when I'm programming for Raspberry Pi, which I will make use of in the rest of this tutorial. Um, now, you might be familiar with these programs already, but just in case you're new to Raspberry Pi development, um, the first one is something called Putty, which you can get from putty.org. And what that enables you to do is set up a uh, remote connection from your PC to the Raspberry Pi and then run commands on the command line uh, just as if you were logged onto your uh, Raspberry Pi directly. Uh, so it's a bit like a remote desktop connection but for a command line interface. And that's going to enable you to um, monitor and log on to your Raspberry Pi without physically having to be next to it. Um, you don't even need a keyboard or a monitor plugged into your Raspberry Pi. It can be sitting away somewhere, tucked in a server room somewhere. So long as it's got an Ethernet connection and a power connection, you can now manage it all remotely through Putty. And the second application I use uh, is something called WinSCP. Uh, so SCP is a uh, type of file transfer protocol, very much like FTP, if you're familiar with that. Um, but it's commonly used on Linux machines. And WinSCP will allow you to uh, copy and move files around the directory structure uh, on your Raspberry Pi, just like um, a normal FTP program would let you do. Uh, so you're going to find this very useful when you want to install packages uh, onto your Raspberry Pi, or if you want to edit files. I often find rather than editing them on the Raspberry Pi, you might want to copy them onto your PC edit them in a familiar environment like Visual Studio or something and then copy them back uh, when you're done with it. So those are just two software programs which you might see being used uh, later on in this video um, just so you know what they are. So now that I've covered that uh, let's actually get on with installing Asterix onto the Raspberry Pi itself. So, to download the uh, Asterix program onto Raspberry Pi, first of all go to raspberry-asterix.org and then go to the downloads page. And uh, as the time I'm recording this, the latest release here is the 4th of April, which has got a torrent and a zip file. So I'm going to grab the um, zip file version here. And that will be a zip archive, um, which will contain a single image file. Then what you want to do is burn that image onto um, an SD card. There's instructions on the web page if you're not quite sure how to do that, but um, there's a little uh, SD card utility in Windows and you basically burn uh, the image onto the SD card, much the same way as you burn an image onto a CD if you're familiar with that. Um, once you've done that, uh, remove the SD card from your PC and pop it into your Raspberry Pi and turn it on. Now before going any further, the next thing I suggest you do is assign a static IP address to the Raspberry Pi. That's going to make it much simpler to connect to over the network from different clients and definitely know that that same IP address is going to be mapped to the Raspberry Pi each time. Now the exact process to do that is going to differ depending on exactly how your router works. Um, but on mine, I can get to a configuration page like this. Um, and I can see the MAC address of all devices that are currently on the network. And if they've currently been assigned an IP through DHCP, 
what I can do is reserve uh, an address that's somewhere in the range and say, okay, next time they connect, keep this address open for them and they'll connect to that one every time. From then on, it means that we'll be able to refer to that IP address and know that it will definitely have been assigned uh, to that device. Okay, so that image you just downloaded and burned on the SD card is actually a complete distribution ready to run Asterix on a Raspberry Pi. So it contains not just the Asterix application itself, it's actually got the Raspberry and operating system as well. And it's also got something called Free PBX, which is like a graphical user front end, which allows you to manage Asterix through a web browser uh, from another computer connected to the network. And we'll look at each of those elements in turn, but the first thing we're gonna do is uh, log on to the Raspberry Pi and actually configure the operating system itself. So fire up Putty on your PC and connect to the IP address uh, that's been assigned to your Raspberry Pi and uh, we'll log on to it. Okay, so when you log on to the command line, you'll see an interface like this and we'll log on uh, as the root user. So the default, pass uh, the default account is root and the password is raspberry. And then the first thing we'll do is run uh, a program called raspi.config and we'll just uh, step down the options to advanced options, expand file system. So by default, um, the installation here doesn't use all of the SD card file system. Uh, so what that option does is it'll expand it just to use uh, the whole space available on the SD card. And then we'll just finish and then we'll select yes to reboot and that will um, expand the file system to fill the whole SD card. Now when the system is rebooted, we'll log on again. So once again, we'll log in as root and with the password raspberry. And uh, here we go back to the uh, command prompt. And this time the, f uh, the next application we're going to run uh, is uh, to generate a new set of host keys. So we're gonna go regen host keys. So this will uh, ensure that the system is secure by uh, generating a new set of uh, keys to use. And this takes a little bit of time, so um, I will just uh, skip ahead. Okay, so when you're back at the uh, command prompt, um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, make sure that we have the correct time zone configured. Um, that's actually important because when we are placing uh, telephone calls through the system, uh, the timestamp is going to be used to um, measure various aspects of call length and to schedule calls for the future and things like that. Uh, so we'll just hit configure time zone. And obviously select the uh, correct area for where you are. I'm in Europe and uh, scroll down this list here. I am closest to London and that will just uh, set the correct time from uh, a network time server. Okay, having set the time, uh, the next thing we'll do is, oh, if I can spell that right, uh, we will just uh, reconfigure uh, all the packages with that new locale that we've set. Uh, so again, this takes a little bit of time because uh, it sort of cycles through all the packages and just lets them know uh, the new settings. Uh, okay, so we'll set the default locale as the new locale we've set. And again, this takes a little bit of time because um, it's going to go through uh, all the packages and just configure it to that new locale we set. Um, so I'll just skip ahead again. Okay, and now we're going to uh, just make sure that any modules that are installed are up to date. Uh, so there is a command line um, we can run that will upgrade any packages that have been installed uh, obviously since the distribution that we've got which is bundled on the 4th of April um, so to do that uh, we'll type raspbx-upgrade and hit enter uh, so there's 27 modules have been updated since the uh, the version I installed obviously that might differ for you and then eventually when all the upgrades have been completed uh, you'll get sent back to the uh, command line prompt like this and uh, then you are uh, all ready to go and configure Asterix. So now we've got the operating system set up, what we're going to do is log in and actually start to configure the Asterix server itself. 
And the easiest way to do this is to use the free PBX web front end that's been included in the package you downloaded. So if you load a web browser on your PC and go to the IP address that was assigned to your Raspberry Pi, um, or alternatively, if you go to raspbx.local, it should redirect there as well. And that's going to give you uh, the front end of the uh, free PBX GUI that should look like this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up an administrator account, which we'll use to uh, uh, administer the system. So I'll just call that account admin, and I'll use the password admin as well, although obviously you can make that a bit more secure when you're doing this for real. Uh, retype that there. And then I'll just put an email address in, which is uh, going to be used to send any uh, notifications about updates to the system and things like that. Click Create Account. And in the next screen, we're going to log on to Free PBX Administration using the account details we just created. So admin, admin for me. Uh, click Continue. And that will just load up the uh, start screen. OK, so now we've got to set the locale for PBX. Remember, we set the locale for the operating system itself. Uh, now we're just going to set that uh, for free PBX as well. And for Asterix, I'm in Europe, so we just set that there. Okay, and now it's loading the uh, the front menu. Now, um, one thing I'm going to draw your attention to while this is loading is you'll see there's a red button appeared at the top right that says Apply Config. Um, that's going to appear every time you make a, a change to the system and you save that change. To actually make that change take effect, you need to click that button every time. So just saving your changes won't uh, reload them until the next time you restart the system. So every time you see that button, just click it. Okay, and here we are. So this is like the dashboard view. And you see across the top there's menu items. There's lots of menu items, um, but uh, we won't use most of them. The first thing I want you to do is go to Applications and then Extensions, which is here. And an extension is the name for any kind of endpoint on the Asterix network can receive a call or make a call. So we're going to add a new extension. I'm going to go add new PJSIP extension, which is like the default uh, sort of protocol used in Asterix. So we're going to create an extension number that's assigned to one of our phones. So we can type the number that's going to be dialed relating to this phone. I'll just put a thousand, but that can be any number you want. The display name, that's going to be uh, if your phone handset has like a, a display that says like caller ID and things like that, that's going to be the name that's going to be displayed there. Uh, instead of the phone number. So I just put it rotary phone. You don't need to put that in. Um, outbound say ID, we're not going to fill that in. We're not going to need that for this example. And in fact, there's some other uh, settings down the bottom here that we're not going to make use of either. Just ignore all those. But the one you do need to pay attention to is this secret field here. So the secret, this is like the password associated with this extension. So we've set up a user extension with the number 100, that's a bit like the user ID, and the secret is the password. So I'll submit that, and just wait a second, and you'll see that it's appeared here in the table of extension numbers on the system. There's our extension 1000, we've called it rotary phone, it's PJSIP. And you'll also notice the, the red button up here again, apply config. So every time you see that um, button appear, just remember to click it and that's actually going to make the changes that we've just um, uh, made to that extension take effect. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time uh, just for those changes to, to reload. Like, so I'm actually using quite an old Raspberry Pi for this. Um, this will probably be a bit quicker if you're using a newer one. There we go. So those changes have taken effect and that extension is now uh, live on the system. And then what you can do is you can repeat that same process to add uh, extension numbers for any handsets uh, you might want to add to the system. Okay, so now you've created some extensions in Asterisk itself. Uh, what you now need to do is to map a physical telephone handset that's going to use that extension to allow it to make and receive uh, calls on that number. So to do that, uh, what I want you to do is to log on to the web interface associated with your internet telephone adapter. So in my case, I'm using a Linksys PAP2T, and if I load up a web browser and go to the IP address associated with that, uh, I get an interface that looks like this. So this is what I see when I log on to my um, 
telephone adapter. Um, yours might be slightly different, but most of the ones I've seen uh, have basically the same options. The first thing I'm going to do is log on to the admin section, which is this link over here that says admin logon. And that's going to give me the, uh, the settings to configure. So I'm going to go to line one, which is the line which I've got my rotary phone plugged into. And uh, there's sort of various fields here. So this proxy field here, that needs to be the IP address of the Raspberry Pi that's running asterisk. So that static IP address we assigned earlier, that's my one there. And then uh, this section here, so the display name here, this is my rotary phone, and I'm going to put the extension number in the user ID field. The password, if I just click back here, if you remember when we set up this extension here, um, there was a field called secret. Uh, if I just load that up, click the edit button there. So this secret here, this long hash code, I'm going to copy that and paste it into that password field there. So the user ID of a thousand, that's extension number, and the password is the secret. Then I'm just going to click on save settings and that is going to reload those settings there. I've left everything else the same. Like I say, there are lots of other uh, settings you can adjust. Um, you can make different ringtones, you can do um, you know, the length of time and delay and things like that, but that's enough to um, get it get it working, just those uh, settings there. So the ID and the password need to match the extension and the secret. So that's how you can map a physical telephone handset uh, to one of the extension numbers in asterisk. Um, you can also have uh, what we often call virtual phones or soft phones. So these are uh, software clients running on a PC and they can connect to asterisk and let you use your um, PCs speakers or headphones and the microphone to make uh, calls through the network like that as well. So on a PC, on a Windows PC, I'm using a program called MicroSIP, uh, which is a free soft phone client. And here's how you would set that up to uh, map to one of the extension numbers. So to download the software, you can go to www.microsip.org uh, and go to the downloads link across the top here. Um, and when you install it, it's a nice, uh, simple, single screen, uh, which looks a bit like this. So you get this sort of virtual keypad on the screen. And what we need to do is to set up an account that's going to um, log on to the Asterix server to one of those extensions. So if we go to the menu options here, edit account. So I've already got this um, set up, so I'll just talk through the, uh, the options that are here. So, uh, the account name, you can call this anything you want. This is just uh, if you want to set up multiple accounts within MicroSIP. So the SIP server and the SIP proxy in this case, they're both set to um, the IP address of the Raspberry Pi again, just as we did before. And the username, again as before, the username is going to be the extension number that you want to be associated with this phone. Uh, so I had 1000 for my physical rotary phone handset. Uh, for this uh, virtual handset, I'm going to use the extension 2000. I'm going to set the domain to localhost. Uh, the login I've also set to 2000. And the password, uh, so if I just skip back here again for a minute, so uh, you'll see I've actually set up a few new extensions here. Um, so I did this the same as I set the first one with each uh, add extension, PJSIP extension. So I've added one for the virtual phone already. And if I just go into um, edit that extension there by clicking on the button over here. Um, so remember that the secret in this case, so I've actually manually set a, a, uh, a secret for this one, which is the word password. Again, not desperately secure, but um, because I'm going to be running this network completely locally, completely isolated from any other network, um, it, I'm not really too bothered about anyone likely to, to hack into it. So that password there. Um, is the same password that you enter into MicroSIP here. So it's very similar to the way that we connected the actual handset through the Linksys uh, configuration page. The login is the extension number and the password is the secret. Um, just as before, if you want to have like a friendly display name come up uh, for any clients that have caller ID, you can put that in there. Um, other than that, that's basically all you need to do and save that. And you should be able to tell whether it's uh, worked or not uh, because at the bottom here, this status should be online. If it says online in green, then you know that uh, you've got your MicroSIP client correctly connected. 
So if you've been following along, uh, the point you should be at now is that you have at least two extension numbers defined in asterisk itself. And those extension numbers are assigned to either a uh, physical phone handset uh, that's been connected to the network through something like Linksys, uh, PAPT, um, or perhaps they're mapped directly to a soft phone client like Microsip uh, running on a PC. So now that we've got uh, two extensions on the network, we should be able to test whether they're working or not by trying to make a call from one to the other. Uh, so let's try doing that. So if I open up my Microsoft client there, uh, now the first thing I'm going to do is to check that I know the correct extension number for the line I'm going to try and call. And Asterisk has got a, a useful feature in it, which is if you dial star six five from any extension, uh, you'll get an automated message telling you the extension number that you're calling from. So if I just call that. Your extension number is two zero zero zero. Good. So that's what we're expecting. My Microsoft client, obviously, uh, we set up to use the extension 2000. So now I should be able to dial into my PC from my handset here. So I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I'm getting a dialing tone on the line. And I'm going to dial 2 0 0 0. <laughs> And my PC alerts me that I have an incoming call. So if I answer that call, uh, what you should now be able to hear is that uh, I've managed to make a conversation with myself. So everything I speak through the microphone is coming out of my PC speaker, and you've probably got lots of horrible feedback. So I'll uh, end that call. Not very productive, but there you go. Um, so yes, so we've demonstrated that the asterisk server is running correctly. You've managed to set up extensions and make calls between different extensions, uh, whether they are physical phone handsets or virtual phones. And that's about where I'm going to leave it for this video. In the next video, what I'm going to look at is a bit more uh, advanced information about how you can set up features and custom dial plans. So that's where you set up extensions that don't actually make a phone uh, ring at the other end, but what they might do is things like um, play a answer machine message back, a pre-recorded message, or perhaps they run a script, like a Python script, that uh, makes some kind of event happen. So that's when you can really start getting some quite fun things happening as a result of placing an inbound phone call. Um, so I hope you found uh, the content of this video helpful and informative. And please join me for the next one where we'll continue to uh, extend our telephone network and add more features. Thanks very much for watching.